How's it going guys? I'm Viper, welcome to the channel. Now, one of the most popular videos on my channel is the Stellaris console command video. So, that, plus the fact that I've had a few of you guys ask me about some more stuff on Stellaris, I thought I'd make a video on how you guys can go about making your first victory within Stellaris. Now, don't be knocked about the fact that if you've not won a game or if you've turned it on in the game and you've played it for the first time and you're just swamped and don't know what to do. Don't be disheartened by that. Stellaris is probably the best grand strategy game ever made. Like, personally, Hearts of Iron is good by Paradox. Crusader Kings 3 is good by Paradox, obviously. But my own personal opinion, I think Stellaris is the best one that they do. I haven't played other ones. I've not played Europa Universalis. I have it, but I've not played it. So I can't really say about them games. But in my own personal opinion, Stellaris is the best one that they do. And it's that good. We'll start a new game. And you can see I have every single DLC. So it's that, that's how good it is. If you do want to get all the DLC, go over CD keys. Don't buy it off the Steam marketplace. It'll probably cost you like 200 quid. So I'll go over to Steam. It'll probably cost you about 120 quid on Steam. But... It's worth it. The more DLC you buy, the easier the game becomes for you. But that, that's the best thing I can say about it. And if you are looking to get the DLC and you have none, then make sure you get the DLC first. Don't get like the species packs or the plantoids, like the plantoids pack or the aqua aquatics pack. Don't get that. Don't. Get the DLC first. So you want to start off with Federations, then probably Nemesis, Synthetic Dawn. And then after you've got all that, then you want to get stuff like Distant Stars, like Story Packs, so you get more more stuff. The new DLC Astral Planes is not too bad. I uh, got that on Saturday. I played a game Saturday, Sunday, and last night, just to see if it was all working properly still. And it does. And I'm going to go through it now. And I'm going to make it so that you guys at home can get your first win. So, as you can see, Sorry, my heartburn. <laughs> As you can see, we have a lot of species. Now, these are good species to choose from. We have exterminators. So, if you want to go and uh, wipe the planet out, there's these. Are these are the exterminator ones. There is an exterminator ones, which are machine. Is it these ones? Yeah, no, it is then. Look there. Determined exterminators. So, if you want to go and destroy everything in the galaxy, these are not a bad race to use. But, they've got these stuff. So, what we're going to do is, we are going to go with the hive because if you are struggling with the game and you have a hive mind so a gestalt conscience like that it means that you do not need to have consumer goods so you don't need to bother about consumer goods which is quite a big benefit actually so if you are struggling with resources in that lot something like these have a good race to go with because as you can see there it says negative pops belong to the drone living standard and do not require consumer goods because there's only one person really that's in control the hive mind or in the machine world case the overlord or the machine hat mind so you'll only have one person that you have to deal with on your council if you have that dlc if you do not have the dlc i think it's federations if you don't have that dlc it's the one way you can get the senate and all that lot so that's all right but if you want to go with them you can but what i recommend you do is you have a look through and um, this is the most important part of you making your game of Stellaris. Now, this is going to take a while. So, let's just look at the guys down here. Who have we got? Let's have a look who we can see. So, where are... Do, do, do. Let me just have a quick little look. I'm trying to find something. So, I've actually modified the species and it's changed it. Which is mental, really, because Commonwealth of Man's there twice. So... As you can see here, I have the Ishtia Star Collected. These are an anthropoid species. Let me just check anthropoids. Yeah, I have all of the species and it's changed the edit. So, as you can see here, I have an Empire Spawning Allowed. Ishtia Collective is allowed to appear in a regular game instead of a randomly generated Empire. I'm going to turn that off because they're pretty dope. So, I'll turn them off. Because they're species that I've made. So when I made this species. I did not have on it. Divided attention. And sedentary. Is it not moving down? I've got to move this. Jesus. Or communal. I edited this species. And you want to do this yourself. To make it easy for yourself. The top three don't really matter. But traits. As you can see here. It will say on yours. When you come on it. Trait picks left one. 
with trait points left, zero. You will be able to take one off and put it on. So as you can see, if I put on, what's going on with the cursor? I can put on no plane there, no non-adaptive, sorry. The habitability is minus 10%. Now really, that is nothing. Because once you unlock terraforming or terraforming gases, you can terraform barren worlds. So you can make them 100%. So if I was to put on that, you can see I have two points. But because I've got too many traits, I can't because I'm negative one. It only allows you to take a certain few. So I will take that off. But you don't need to worry about the fact of that because in the game, you will get a technology, terraforming gases, where you can terraform a barren world. So if you are struggling, I'd recommend getting that because come about 22, 30, you could probably get that terraforming gases by this setup that I'm going to be doing for you. Like I say, this is for those who are struggling. So go through this, look what you want. As you can see, hive mind, not changing that, obviously. I have rapid breeders so that the population growth speed can do by plus 10%. That is so powerful because the more people you can get on your planets, the more pops that you have. Yes, it increases your empire size sprawl, but then you can build more buildings on your planets because of the fact that you open up more blocks on the planet. Now, that used to take ages originally when it first came out. Like, don't get me wrong, it took like I got three quarters of the game for you. you got it, all your people on there and you had to move them all about. You won't have that problem with this. So, rapid breathers, really, really recommend. And then I have strong army damage plus 20%. Worker pop resource output plus 2.5%. That may sound small, but that's really large when you've got a thousand drones. See what I mean? 2,500 is quite a lot compared to 2.5. So it does mount and stack up. I also have fleeting. Leader lifespan is minus 10 years because there is technology that you get in the game that allows you to increase your leader's lifespan by plus 10 years, like twice, and plus five years, where at the end game, that keeps coming up with like armor, Weapon fire rate, weapon hit damage. That's the end game when you research all the technology and you can get yourselves them to like 20, energy weapon 20. So your energy weapons do double damage because it's plus 5% each time. So double 20, that means your, all your ships fire twice as hard hitting as what they do normally. So once you get to that stage of the game, as long as you can last to that stage of the game, you, you really can't lose with this setup. Then we're going to go for fleeting. Well, not so fleeting. Said enter. So pop growth from immigration is minus 15%. And resettlement cost is plus 25%. Don't need to worry about that. We are not going to be having anyone coming in from immigration. Because we are a hive mind. So we could have it where we could, have, we could eat on the pops. In the last game I actually got have five pops in your system. That are food. <laughs> like I wouldn't even try and get it and I got it. So... Don't need that. And then we have communal, which is pop housing usage minus 10%. Now I put that on because I needed to put on one of one. Because the points thing. So traits is probably one of the most important things. So do have a look through this. Names in class, city appearance, knock yourselves out. And then we come to the next most important thing in the game. The origin. Now this determines how you start the game. And they go from easy to hard on how you start the game. So, prosperous unification. As you can see, you get a plus generator district. You get a plus agriculture district. Planetary modifier, prosperous unification. And guaranteed research options of planetary unification. Some of these you will not be able to get. Because obviously you need the DLC. So, as you can see, there is quite a few. Depending on what you want and how you want to start is the best for you now this depends totally on your play style so i could tell you like that one there doomsday warning challenging origin that's because a asteroid comes and hits you does it civilization's home world is highly unstable and it is only a matter of time before it explodes this sorry their only hope is to seek refuge elsewhere before it is too late Homeworld, Doomsday, Planet Modifier, Guaranteed Habitable Worlds are not spawned. You read that? Guaranteed Habitable Worlds are not spawned. 
So you will probably not find no planets to settle on that. I don't know, I've not played that one yet. I'm going through. Necrophage, you can have dead soldiers and stuff. Not too bad, necromancy and stuff. Here be dragons. You have a dragon. This is the aquatics pack. You have the dragon in your starting system. It's so overpowered, like no one can beat you in the first 20 years. I don't know if that's changed, like, but if you've got aquatics and you've got Herbie Dragons, there's a dragon in your solar in your system, in your solar system, right? That comes to your planet, and if, I think if you feed it, I'm sure you feed it. Like you let it stay at first, and then you feed it, and then it'll like fight for you and become on your side. I'm actually got a save game on that where I'm getting the 13 dragons in my solar in my own system. I'm actually got 11 in it in a minute, so I'm working on that one in a minute. But I'm like 200, 200 years into it on that. Then we have like Subterranean. This is the one I'm going to go when I play a Lithoid character. Lithoids are made out of stones. You get that with the Lithoid pack. And there's an achievement where Dig Down Deep. Or I think that's that one. I don't know. I'm not checked. Fragmenta Hive. Is it? No, sorry. Progenator Hive. So the Hive has gained evolutionally advantages. Through semi-independent leaders. These offspring. Gradually improve overall proficiency, though they require constant control. Uh, sorry, constant oversight. A little bit of far away from my uh, monitor. I have twenty-one, twenty, and twenty-two, twenty vision in my eyes. So I'm <laughs> it's not like I'm blind. It's just I am like literally four meters away from me uh, monitor that this is on, and it's four K, so it's obviously smaller than the HD one. Uh, slingshot to the stars. You start your system with a catapult. A galactic catapult. Teachers of the Shroud. Oh, I think you might need uh, the finger pack for that though. Imperial Fielding. You all like Star Wars, don't you? I think that's what that is. Looks like it, doesn't it? Not bad though. Payback. Knights of the Toxic God. You'll need the Toxic for that one. Not a bad one, as its own little mad story quest chain where you go and do stuff. I actually did do that, but I didn't get myself on the Federation to uh, insult all the members, so we've got to go through it again with that one. Overtuned, I'm not used. Broken Shackles, I think that's where you break yourself out from uh, being slaves. Fear of the Dark. Home system is a pre FTL civilization created by a separatist faction. Formerly part of your empire. Granting events and benefits. So, is that the one? I think that's the one where you don't even start with faster than light and you build your planet up first. I think that's that one. Not played that yet. That's one of the next ones we're going to be doing. So, these are really depended on whatever you want. So, like their fruitful partnerships, space far north, dispersed seed pods throughout the galaxy available star base buildings star sealed gardens that's i think that's to do with the uh bowel cursor chain thing where you get the the uh flipping seed ship so i had all then <laughs> to get the seed ship i swear like a sailor that's why i just fall by mistake uh, so this here really depends on your species so let's say for example if because i'm not a robot i wouldn't want to be a mechanic mechanist why would you want to be a mechanist? Mechanist, you know what I mean? You're not a robot. But if you were playing as a robot, then that's a good one. If you're playing as aqua, an aqua species from water, then you want to go for Herbie Dragons because Herbie Dragons is part of the aquatic one. If you're doing it as a toxic god, you need the toxic gods and do the night of the toxic gods. So this this really does depend. This one. If you're struggling about what to choose, choose prosperous unification. If you're going as a hive mind, choose. Fruity full partnership. That's two that I've played. Really easy games. Easy games. Like really like the last game I had. I think I'm pretty certain my other one was Fruity full partnership. And it was probably the easiest game of Stellaris I've ever played. And I'm not lying there. It was probably the easiest game of Stellaris I've ever played. And then you've got your government and your ethics. Also another one that you do want to keep your eye on. You can't change this because you are a gestalt conscience if you're going as a hive mind or as a machine intelligence. But I did put on divided attention because what does that say there? It says empire size from planets minus 50%. Growth node experience gain plus 25%. So if I'm losing 50% of my empire size 
from my planets, then I know I've lost half of one thing that increases my empire sprawl. So it doesn't really matter the fact that I have on these. You know, the ones that do bad. So just think about that when you are choosing. This part of the game is where it determines whether you have a successful playthrough of Stellaris or not. So if you just go through it without even looking at it, reading through stuff, what stuff does, then you will have some troubles. And also, part of the main mechanics of the gameplay, like the gameplay is out the same, you will have different stuff to do. Each one of these is a total different game of Stellaris. It's just so good. It's That's why Stellaris is so good. Every time I've played it, it's a different species with a different one of these. It's like a total different game. It's just so good. So, when you are choosing this, you do want to think about that. You want to think about your traits, what works well with your traits and your origin, depending on what your origin is, and also what works well with your governing and ethics, depending on what these you have. So, obviously I have unemployment, joys, unemployment drones, also produce science. And my research alternatives of plus one. And the cognitive node experience gain of 25%. So, them two there, with a hive mind, who only has the one person, because it's a hive mind, controlling all of the, like, your empire through your, em like your, your council. I'll show you what I mean when it's on it, if you've not got the DLC. You basically have one person running all your stuff, so you've got more councillors that you can appoint in different places for, like, say, the Senate, or to spy if you've got Nemesis. I'm pretty certain it's Nemesis. You can start spying on people. Uh, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty certain it is. So, that's that. Really important. This doesn't matter, it's just the voice of your Priority guy. Faith. What is a single voice? Like, say, uh, that one there. Agnostic completed. All Robot. Systems nominal. Where, the aquatic pack one. We all have the makings of greatness in us. So the pirates. We just need to take the helm, chart the course, and enjoy the ride. I didn't click twice there then, that was one. Toxoid. Please, do not press any buttons if you don't know what they do. I've already had to save you from spontaneous combustion quite enough times. So there's quite Our a few to choose from. A galactic system that maximizes innovative self-actualization. And, and if you want it. redefines future proof solutions for and every stage of a customer's life. Megacorp. We're with you every step of the way. Megacorp. You need that one, obviously. <laughs> Typical broadcast message from a company, eh? And if you just want it simply because you're based on your government, I'll click on based on government and it should change it straight away to hive mind. We are one. We are all. We are one. Our unity cannot be divided. Empire name, don't worry about it. It's Dash Star Collective is what these were called, but I edited this this uh, species so it's no longer in the list of species that I could choose from. But it is now better than the species because I've adjusted it. If you If you've got the Star Collective down there, you can compare it to the original to what i've got it was like 27 hours of gameplay when i changed it so i've done a lot in that time one game 27 hours of gameplay so yeah be prepared for a long game as well this doesn't really matter about the flag ship appearance doesn't really matter go with whatever you like i usually go necroid or the federation one is it humanoid no necroid because they look good see all nice and pointy do like the um, do like this the uh, skins on them and it's the imperial I like as well. This is what I mean by fed. This is what I meant by federations. Looks like uh, Halo and Star Wars mixed in it a bit really. Looks a bit cool. So you do, obviously you won't be able to get all these. And also do bear in mind if you do play a game with mods, then you probably won't be able to get achievements. Do bear that in mind. I think Tiny UI still does, but I don't use that no more because they've actually made it smaller. Thank God. And then your real appearance, which doesn't matter, and your ruler traits. Now, this is one that you do want to think about. Now, because I am a hive mind and I have the one person, which is this one person here, they are in control of everything. They're king, the law, they're everything, they're a hive mind. If you played Halo, you know what a grave mind is. It's the hive mind. So, spark of genius, research speed, plus 3%. It used to be 10% now, but it goes up anyway, I think. I think it does go up. And next... All good, all done, don't need to bother with anything. And we'll go back because I'm not changing anything, I've already done it. 
So I'm going to select them because I've already done it. Now this is where this is where you probably are struggling. I've set this actually up. I actually came on it and set it up for easy for yourself, just so I could test to see if it would be easy for people to do. Now this is a good setup if you do want to play a game and you are struggling. As you can see, this game is eligible for achievements. If that is not down there, it's either because you've not got it in Iron Man mode, which means you can't set save scum. You know what I mean by that? Saving and reload your game and get killed and stuff. So you need to have Iron Man on, can't have that off, but you don't really need it off anyway. It's, it's, once, it's, once you get used to the main core mechanics of the game and the game basis of the game, then it's all right. And this is a good setup for anybody who wants to have a really, really, really simple game. And I mean simple game. You want a galaxy size, maybe if you're struggling on the size, just do a small. I can't do small on it because it's a starburst. So let me just go to spiral to arm, like our galaxy. Is that one that lets me small? Yeah, small, yeah. Is that Galaxy Spiral 2 arm? I think it might be just Spiral 1 arm out of Galaxy, actually. <laughs> I think mean, it might be 1. I'm sure it's 2. Uh, AI Empires 1. That is how many of the other species you want in the game. So, even though I've got it on 2 there, when you get, say, to 2250 in the game, there's going to be a lot more than 2 people. I can tell you that now. If you put it on 1... <laughs> there'll be a lot of people regardless i don't know how it manages to do it but it does they just always split up and force so advanced ai starts that means that they will be more advanced than you you don't want that on if you're playing as like you're struggling to play and you're watching this video now fallen empires this is mm, a yes or a no it depends certain aspects on the traits and origins the uh, origins sorry you can play as like a Oh, what's it called? It's a uh, like a bulwark of the fallen empire. So the fallen empire like is like protector, your protectorate. So if you have that style and you turned off fallen empires, then you're not going to have no one to support you in that. If you do choose that origin, I'm pretty certain it's an origin. But you're you're like a you're a vassal of the fallen empire. The fallen empire collapsed, and obviously they used to protect you. They don't know more because they collapsed. Still got like 17,000 technology level than you when you're 30,000 points more higher than him on the victory card. But never mind, eh? So you do want to keep at least one on. The Marauder Empires, I always have one on. I mean, sometimes I have two or three. It depends. If that's like more stuff that you've got to deal with. So probably pirates and stuff. You know, stuff like that. But you can suppress that with stuff. I'll show you that later in another video. <laughs> Excuse me. So... Technology and tradition cost. That is the very minimum. 0.25%. If you have it on the very minimum and you don't really invest in your sciences and your sciences is say about 3,000 in total, so 1,000 on each. Physics. Uh, what's the green one? Sociology, is it? Society. The society, sorry. And engineering. If you have it on that at 0.25%, by the time you get to about 2280, you're probably researching the end technologies. And that's with only about 3,000 science, 1,000 science on each. So you don't really have to worry about your science tech costs. But do bear in mind that the other systems and the other species on the table, on the board, will also have a 0.25% technology cost. So do bear that in mind. Then we have Habit of Worlds. You want to put that on times 5. I I don't do it as times 5 myself because obviously hive mind. I build habitation modules. Habitation, habitat, sorry. Habitat used to be broke. <laughs> like when it first came out, Habitat was so OP. But now they're not as bad. And to make them even better, you need to get Voidborn. Or Void Spawn. I think it's Voidborn. The Voidborn tradition. So you can stay in one system and build like up instead of building out. But the problem there is you're not going to get the resources and the like minerals. Dark matter, for example, just roll living metal. You can't get living metal now unless you go to the, through the L gate, the L gate cluster. Research that, go through that, go to a little separate branch off galaxy, and then you'll be able to claim everything there and then get liquid metals. You actually get a ship, the grey, and if you turn that into a warship instead of a like there's a science ship, a warship, and another ship, I can't remember what the other ship is, but I always turn it into a warship and it's called the grey or grey and it's, it's like 80,000 attack power. Later on in the game, when you first get it, it's like but it depends when you get it, actually, to be honest, on what your weapon levels are at. But that single ship alone is like 
80,000 attack power when I've got a fleet of 200 command limit with 190,000 attack power on them with times 20 on the like lasers and 10 on the armor. So it is really good and really worth going to get the liquid metal and doing the Elgate clusters. Like you want to beat the other species to that. But with only one ally empire, AI empire, you shouldn't really bother and worry about that. You should be all right and be able to get that. Then the next... Pre-FTL civilizations and pre-sapient species. Now, this is your outposts. Where you build an outpost above a planet. Where and, and then like you can... You first do the outpost above the planet. You'll get insight into the pre-FTLs. Whatever species they are on the planet. And then once it gets to 100. You can then like do diplomacy or espionage. And then you can put people down on the planet. And get into the society and stuff. That you might need Nemesis for now. I'm not too certain because I never did that before I had Nemesis, so <laughs> do bear that in mind. But yeah, instead of it just being an outpost, you can actually do diplomacy and espionage on the planet of the pre sapient FTLs. That's faster than light for those of you who are new to the game. Then the next, the crisis strength. Now I've got it at 0.75 here. If I was you and you're struggling to play, well, you don't want it off. Let's put it on 0.25. I usually have it on about 2 when I play a game. I'm not no fantastic at it. Like, I'm not like... I can't think of the names of the guys who you see who do the game. You know who I'm on about. If you're watching this video on Stellaris, then you know who I'm on about. The other two guys have competitions on Stellaris and they have a game in like 6.5 hours. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, it doesn't take me 6.5 hours. The game probably takes me about 18 to 22 hours. And it ends in about 23.75, as you can see right there. This is how I always set my time up. So, Crisis Strength, next one. We'll do the time in a minute. I'll get back to that. Crisis Strength, this depends... Uh, the Crisis Type, sorry, not Strength. The Contingency, the Extra Dimensional Invaders, or the Prephorian Scourge. Now, I can't remember the Contingency. The Interdimensional Invaders, they create a tear. Their ships are not in the space. Their ships come flying through as soon as it appears. The thing you want to do is send all your fleets over it straight away and destroy that tear. Because the, so long as the tear's open, ships are going to keep coming through and they're going to eat everything in the system. As soon as the end game crisis starts, which is in the end game, you need to go over there and sort it out straight away. If you allow them to spread out and break out, then you're going to have a lot of trouble dealing with them. Because as long as the astral tear is there, they will always have reinforcements. And depending on how you want the uh, difficulty and how you want the crisis strength so if let's say for example if you did it on 1 point, 0.75 times right if you did it on 0 0.75 times their fleets are probably going to range between 50,000 and 150,000 damage i would say about that if you put it on one that's a fleet not not all of them a fleet and then if you put it on about one times it was probably about 75 275,000 damage per attack fleet but that also depends on this here so I, as you can see i always play a game like this 22 75 23 25 so the mid game is when Khan will turn up and stuff like that they're the great Khan, yeah you're in me right and then the victory year is 23 75 so that can't go down anymore because of how high that is so there 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 but then i've got 50 years as soon as the mid game starts that's when you get the mid game like attack like, like in my last game it was calm so bear that in mind the uh actual fact i think the contingency i think that's the one where they send that that signal through your system and they destroy all the uh ai sending ai cybernetics and stuff i'm pretty certain that's the contingency crisis so regardless of whatever crisis you choose depends also on how you play the game but we'll talk about that when we are in the game so what we're going to do here is as you can see this is pretty much baby now i'm not saying that to insult i mean like you know as in like wolfenstein 3d we have the little baby for the easier easy difficulty or is it baby than EZ? I don't know what it is. I don't really like... Well, Wolfenstein, not too bad, the new ones, but... About part of the one with the two... His daughters, that's not that good. Uh, so, the difficult... Uh, if you are struggling, you don't want to go civilian, say. 
Is that a new difficulty? I think that might be a new difficulty. I don't think I've ever seen civilian. Civilian is probably where you want to start it off. Grand Admiral is... No, we don't want to play it on that difficulty. If you're struggling, if you're watching this video, definitely don't want to play it on Grand Admiral. So, as you can see there, it actually tells you what it does. So, Cadet, the player gets bonuses to, in their, to their economy, research, and naval capacity. So, depending on what you put in here, also makes it difficult for yourself. If I wouldn't play it on civilian, to be honest, I didn't even know you could do it on civilian. First time I ever played it, it was Cadet, and I didn't win my first four games. <laughs> so... <laughs> I always got killed by the M game crisis, so don't be don't be put off by not being able to do it. And then even further down, the difficulty cadet scaling difficulty off. So I'll let you see what that says there. AI receives their full difficulty settings immediately at the start of the game. So. Just think about that as well. So just turn that off. Just making it more hard for yourself if that's not off. Difficulty adjust AI modifiers. Turn it off. What's it do? Don't know. Obviously. It's the AI modifiers. And you don't want them to be even harder, do you? So if you are struggling, take them off. AI aggressiveness. Low. High. Or normal. Just put it on low. The less chance of them attacking you. If you do want a little bit of action in it, you will get some action in it on low. But normal is probably the one. If you put it on high, you're going to get a lot of stuff. I wouldn't recommend playing it on high if you've not got the Federations DLC. Because I'm sure, I'm pretty certain Federations is the one where you get the Senate. And if you've got the Senate, you can assign envoys and like vote on the Senate floor for stuff to be passed, resolutions. It's probably how I imagine the American government is. Senate floor and all that lot motives and that uh like star wars star wars but ignore america star wars it's just like star wars if you want a game of star wars with the senate then you want to get federations i'm certain it's federations it's the one with the, with the diplomacy in the senate and you can have uh, envoys and stuff so if you've not got that do not put ai aggressiveness on high because you'll just get constantly attacked you will not be able to build up your fleet you will not be able to build up your cities and you will not be able to build up your towns and stuff. Your planets, your fleets and your sciences. Because if you don't build them up, you're not going to be able to get them. Then you're going to be at a disadvantage because you was at a war. It's not like in real life where there's a war, the country gets loads of money and loads of technological advances. It's not really like that. If you go to war, you're going to be put at a disadvantage of all the other species because you are engaged in a war. And you can only end a war by war exhaustion. So don't put that on high if you are... Not, if you've not got federations, don't put it on high. Just do not do not put it on high if you've not got federations. And I'm pretty certain it's federations that gives you the Senate floor. You'll have to check the DLC for that. And then we have the Empire placement random. I found it doesn't really matter. Like, I've never put clusters, ever. And there's always been a species starting next to me. Apart from my last game where I put it on random. And they started near me, but it was like 30 years before I bumped into him. So, I think they've actually sorted that out now, but that didn't really matter as far as I was concerned. They always started next to me, so I was always fighting for space. But not in the last game, now that I've got Astral Rifts. So, a little bit of improvement there. But my game did crash for the first time ever. <laughs> I'll say that. I was in shock. It actually crashed. So, AI aggressiveness you don't want on high. You want it on, if you're feeling a bit adventurous, normal, but you will get attacked and stuff and go to wars. Low, you'll have no really problems. And then you've got Empire Placement, don't matter. Advanced Neighbours. So, off. That means that you'll have no one starting. That mean, I think that means there that if you was to put on AI Advanced Start, they'll start next to you. So you don't want AI neighb Advanced Neighbours next to you if you're struggling to play it. So make sure that's off. Advanced Neighbours, off. Now your Hyperlanes. This determines how many people and how many ways you want to get into your space. I always leave these on one, regardless. But whatever I'm playing, if you want to make it a little bit mental, you can put it all the way over here to full. I think that's three, but full. I think full means every single star has every other star that's next to it being able to travel to it. I've never done it like that. I always put it on one. It's easy to manage. If you're struggling with ships and you want to control entry and outway points into your space, it's good until, say, mid-mid game. Put it on that. As soon as they research jump drives and stuff, it doesn't really matter. 
because I'll just jump drive into your base. So <clears throat> at the beginning, if you're struggling, high plane density is a good one. Abandoning gateways, I always leave that on one. If you want more gateways, but that just means more ways into your space. If we do have a gateway, and you'll need to defend that gateway with a starport and platforms. So bear that in mind. So I keep that on one. And also with wormhole pairs. Now you don't want to put gateways on zero because you want the gateway to get the liquid metal. So do bear that in mind. You can probably turn the other you can probably turn the band wormhole bears off. But I do not recommend turning off abandoned gateways because you want to go through the L gate cluster to get the liquid metal before anybody else. And onwards still. So caravanners. Caravaneers, I wanna say it, just caravanners here. So that depends how many people you want to buy if you're asking you to buy stuff. Obviously, I have it on. Oh, L Gates is there. Okay, so you can turn off abandoned gateways. I didn't think that was there, L Gates. I'm, I think that's new. Well, like, L Gates, you need that because. Well, you need. Oh, right, okay. You need Distant Star Story Pack. So you can't do that unless you've got the Distant Star Story Pack. So. If you've got all the DLC and you want to get some other DLC. When I say DLC, I mean the main game DLC, like Plantoids and uh, Aquatics is not DLC in my eyes. It's just a species pack because it is a species pack. It's not DLC. When I say DLC, I mean like more of the core gameplay and more to the core gameplay because it changes somebody's skin. That's a mod in my eyes. So Aquatics and all them species packs, they're just mods. So if you, I've got all the main DLC. You want to get distant stars and you also want to get ancient relics. So you have more stuff to do than the same stuff that you get to do all the time. Then we have the Xeno compatibility. That's so that your race can mate with other races, I think, or they get along together. That's more for when I'm playing as a federation or as a unified prosperity. Unified prosperation where I play as the humans as the with the beacon of liberty trait. So, so I mean, it depends on how you set your game up. And all this is going on this video now. We're getting up to 40 minutes, but... This depends on how your game plays. This is the most important part, in my eyes, of Stellaris. This all depends on how good your game's going to be. Every time I've took my time doing this, every game has been amazing. Like my last game with the Hive. Fantastic, brilliant game. I really, really, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. So just do take your time with this. And then we have these here. The further this is over here, and the further this is down here, the more stronger and the more resources you have at the end of the game. So if you're struggling for power because you can't build a Dyson Sphere because you can only build two wonder mega engineering projects because you've not took on mega wonders, then you want to do that there. So put it all the way to two, and you could put it all the way to naught if you wanted. But I reckon that's like taking the piss a bit. 0 0.5 is all right. That's pretty good. You'll have loads of minerals at the end as long as you stick to your planets and you're okay all the way going through it. As a hive mind or machine intelligence, should be in the thousands per month without even. I was on like 3,000 power per month. I didn't have a Dyson sphere. All I had was a Mata decompressor. The only mega a bit of engineering I had. So, iron mode. If you want achievements, you need iron mode on. Really, you want to keep iron mode on. Because when you get the achievements playing through the game, it tells you that you are learning new aspects of the game. And you are progressing and opening more stuff. Now with all that being said. And we're getting up to 40 minutes. I needed to say all this. To explain it all to you. So that you understood. That, that what we just did there. Was the most important part to the game. If you are struggling throughout the game. And you've not got like anywhere. Or you get to the end game crisis. And you get absolutely slaughtered by the end game crisis. It's because when the mid game starts. This is how I play it. I play it. Start game is build up. You sit your planets. When I say cities, I mean planets. Build up your planets. Build up your space. Spread out. When the mid game starts, you need to stop spreading out. Or only spread out to the planets that you're terraforming. So when they complete terraforming, then yeah, colonize them. But as soon as mid game starts, I stop colonizing planets. You don't really need more than say twenty planets. Like in my last game, I had twenty nine, but that was only because I terraformed loads of planets, and it was the first time I played as a hive mind. So, obviously, I was testing mechanics within the game. And it was the first time I played with the this, the ancient, whatever the distant, the Astro Rift, sorry. The Astro Rift DLC. And I heard that it actually balls the game up and a lot of stuff wasn't working properly. So, I had to check that as well. And I only had one problem, which is where it crashed. So, as you can see, here we are in our system. And I'm seismic anomaly detected. 
Recent seismic activity has revealed unexpected features on the ancient impact site near our crater. So this is the exact same way that I started up my last game, and it was one of the best last one of the best games I've ever had, Stellaris. Now, as you can see there, I've got an astral rift. You will not have that if you do not have astral rifts. But basically, that's something else that makes me explore something else. So if you've got the ancient relics pack you are able to do archaeological dig sites. You'll come across planets. So, say that planet there, it'll have a little symbol like these here, but the symbol will be like a little spade going in some soil. That's an archaeological dig site. You can go there and you can get yourself some relics. It's not that one. It's... Doo -doo -doo. Give me a minute. I've got to find it. I know I'll find it. I know how to find it. So, I can't get it yet because I've got no ancient relics. But there's... Uh, where is it? Give me a minute. I'll find it for you. I'll find it for you. Here you are. So, I can do that. But you will not be able to do this if you don't have Astral Rifts. DLC. Astral Rift is that symbol there. That's a Starbase symbol. Shipyard, sorry. Starbase, Shipyard, same thing. Well, they're not. And the most important thing, as soon as you start the game, before I leave it into a next video, well, actual fact, I won't leave it as a next video. I'll actually go live after this video tonight. Say about, doo -doo -doo, say about 7 o'clock in the United Kingdom. Once I've edited this video and got it up, and I've got to pop out, I'll get back, I'm going to take, yeah, we've got 7 o'clock tonight, I'll be online, and I'll do a little live stream on this, showing you guys how to go about starting it up. But one of the first things you want to do when you come online Go to the second one. So as you can see here, I don't have to put one person here. I don't have to put a person here. I don't have to put a person here. I don't have to put a person here. Because these nodes are doing it because of my hive mind, which controls everything. So hive mind, gestural conscience, or machine intelligence. Struggling, and you can do that. Highly recommend it. Extremely easy. Don't have to worry about much with your counselors or envoys, whatever they're called. These guys up here, Pitcher and Envoys. And then when this is done, you click on that. That will go there. Click on that bar there. You can do another one. But the most important thing for you guys who don't have any of this is go to your policy and edicts. This is where a lot of you are probably struggling as well. And as you can see, you've got these here. Your governments. Your government stuff. So, expansionist. If I was to change that, you see what happens? You see the stuff changes? This is one of the most important things that you've got to look at when you do start straight away. So, a lot of which people have is their commerce. So, let me just have a look. This here, production policy. A lot of you will have it on balanced. When you're playing as like the humans, you probably want to do manufacturing focus. Is it manufacturing? No, it's the... Uh, it's the extraction focus. It's obviously called that different in mine because I, I have menial drones because of my high mind, obviously. So they are drones. So you do want to change this to whatever you want. And whatever you want here. If you don't want to start aggressive straight away, put it on pa proactive so you'll talk to them straight away. Orbital surrender so they can surrender to your ships when you're bombarding. Orbital bombardment indiscriminate. Bomb everything. Bomby man. <laughs> yeah, bomb everything. And then we have these here as well, so you can see. Different things give different things. So do bear this in mind. And when you do unlock more stuff, you will get more policies and edicts. Edicts work where at the minute we got fortify the border. So Starbase upgrade speed plus 50%. Starbase capacitor plus 2. But we will use 15 and it will cost 14 per month. We only have 30. That's what this means. So we can use 30. We have 14. We can go over. So later on there'll be more. When we unlock moats, crystals. So rare crystal, volatile moats, exotic gas. You'll be able to shield shielding and armor and weapon explosion rate. And then later on at the bottom... There'll be one where you can get five extra influence. A lot of you will be struggling with influence. Now, when the game first started, first played, I'm pretty certain you didn't have influence. I think you had 
a outpost capacity. I can't remember. It's like years ago since I played the very first game of Solaris. So your influence is probably the most thing that you're going to worry with. Now, as you can see at the minute, mine is four. Mine's four because, as you can see, I get 0.24 from power protection, one from growing epic, three base produce four. I get one for being a hive mind. I'm pretty certain it is as well. So it's on four instead of three. And you increase your influence by building more ships. If you build more ships, you see there, power projection, 0.24. Your power projection can give you two influence. So as long as you've got enough ships, your influence will increase, your power projection will increase, which will increase your influence, so you can build more ship, more outposts than ships. You don't have any ships, which is mostly outposts. And hyper relays. I cannot express enough about hyper relays. Hyper relays. Hyper relays mean me going from here to here will take a year. Hyper relays mean it'll take me like sixty days. If you want to get your ships around your base quicker and you've not got jump drives, hyper relays are a must. Will they cost twenty five influence? Or did they cost twenty five influence? Let me just have a quick check. They used to cost 25 influence. I can't build them yet. I've not researched them. So, with all that being said, guys, you are able to go and have yourselves a little bit of a game there now with all that video. This is a bit of a long-winded winded video, but it is the amount of stuff that I've told you, which is so important for you to get yourselves up and running on the game of Stellaris. So, in the next video, it will be a live stream. I will be doing it later on today. So, over the course of the next few days, I will be doing a Stellaris live stream of this whole playthrough with this character with this setup so if you are playing along at home you will be able to come along and join in now i hope the video has been helpful if anyone's got any questions about anything about stellaris i've been trying to tell you as much as i can possibly think that will make it so much easier for you for when you do start a game but if you have any questions about anything just go down there leave a little comment i'll see it when i actually see my studio which, well, when YouTube Studio actually tells me I've got a comment, I'll see it, and then I'll leave a little reply answering your question uh, about Stellaris or any problems that you've got. Now, I am not a professional Stellaris player by any means. Um, don't say I am. I am not. I've probably won 80% of all the games I've played, but it was like four games before I even won a game. So, if you are struggling... Take them settings down. When we're playing this game on them settings, you'll see exactly what I mean because I'm going to be able to run away with this because I've, I obviously play it with difficult settings when I play it because obviously, <laughs> well, I've played it a few times now and this is going to be like a bit of a cakewalk. So if anybody's at home is struggling, you're welcome to come along and play along. I'll be talking in the video on the live stream about what I'm doing, why I'm doing stuff, why I'm going about places, why I'm researching stuff and stuff like that. And I'll explain a little bit more of the aspects and the mechanics of the game if you are struggling. But do bear in mind that you get like technologies for like your research speed. I wouldn't take down your research speed, like, but you get technologies for that. You also get like sparks of genius and stuff. It's not as powerful as what it was. It was like 10%. Like now, it, well, it went down. It was 10%. Now then they changed it to it was 5%, but your character levels up and he gets to 10%. And now it's 3%, so it'll probably level up to 10%. And obviously there's the node stuff. Now, if you are playing with a different character and you do not have all the DLC as me in the situation log, you will not have an Astral Rift, obviously. So there will be some aspects in this game that I'm using and playing that you will not be able to do yourselves if you do not have all of the main DLC. Doesn't matter about the species packs, but I've got every DLC, so you'll be able to see it all as well. And also on another fantastic note with Paradox, I don't know if you are aware, but... If one person has all the DLC and you play a game with somebody, then everybody can play with all your DLC. I used to do it with my brother on Hearts of Iron. So he has to come along and play on this with me because I've got all the DLC for this. And with all that being said, guys, I really hope you do find this video really entertaining. I hope it's helped you guys out a hell of a lot. Like I say, I've had a few messages off you guys in the past about console commands and uh, they've been struggling to play a game because it is a grand strategy game it's not just a strategy game it's a grand strategy game and whatever you do if you are playing on from here while i end this video 
do not put it on full fast forward speed up in the corner. Alright, don't put it on full. If anything, just do it once, but don't do it twice. Because too much stuff will go by and you'll not be able to keep up with stuff because you're trying to do so much stuff. So, with all that being said, I hope you have a fantastic day. I really do hope this video helps. I'll be along tonight, do a little bit of a live stream, a couple of hours, just to progress a bit on in this game and help you guys out, hopefully. And as always, I shall see you all on the battlefield. And eyes up, Guardian. This is Viper, signing out. Three, two, one,